All righty. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, attending this class. Uh, who, besides Greg and Olmsted, uh, who's written a, a purchase agreement? Just wave your hand. You have? Okay. Maureen, nothing yet? I have a purchase agreement, but it was new construction, so I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> it's kind of easy. <laughs> That is the easiest one. Yeah. yeah, let them do all the work and you just Great. collect the commission. There you go. Okay. Um, so I will walk you through the different steps and parts of it. Um, do you have, let me start off by saying, asking, do you have a, a buyer checklist? No. Okay, let me bring up. I'm going to this up. I need to move that over. Bear with me for a second. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Bring this back over here. This is something that uh, I developed a while back. Uh, feel free to take a snapshot out of it or if you need me to, uh, I'm getting a warning. My internet is not stable. So bear with me, I'm in Bayfield, Wisconsin. So if you want me to send you a copy, uh, be glad to share it with you. But it's got all the essentials in there. And if you just stop and think about it, date. I'm hearing uh, somebody in the background there. If that's Jeff Olmstead, could you mute it, Jeff? <laughs> Uh, the time you set your appointment, you buyer one, buyer two, there may even be a buyer three, but it has all of their contact information, sell an email right there. So first step is have them pre-approved. So, you know, contact, uh, if you don't already have a favorite lender, find one or use Tanya in the office. Uh, and not just a pre-approval uh, or pre-qualification, but a pre-approval so that they'll, uh, they'll pull some credit and, and they'll start to do some verification work uh, because that's going to be an essential element when you do go to make a, a, a purchase offer. Um, so this gives you the checklist of all the things that you're going to need. Agency disclosure, who we represent, the buyer agency agreement, KW disclosures, and there are two of them. Um, I have a consultation. The CN is Camarada Numeric. That's our consultation uh, that goes through the process of buying a home. Because for a lot of people, it could be their very first, or maybe they haven't bought a, a, a home in 30 years. And so the, the process has changed somewhat. So have a consultation. <laughs> Would you mind uh, sending that over as well, that presentation, so we could kind of get a look at what that looks like? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, I always use a black KW folder and you know a spot for my business card. Uh, we've written 36 articles for the Deep Haven Life magazine. So we always uh, insert an article that we feel is uh, appropriate for that particular audience. Um, and don't forget to enter it into command under new opportunities. Otherwise, you don't get paid. Um, sometimes you set up an automatic uh, MLS property search for them. Um, and then of course, schedule and show properties. So I'm sure you've covered that in your uh, fast start program. So I'm not gonna belabor that. Preparing the offer, I always call the listing agent first and say, what's the time frame? You know, when do your sellers wanna be out? Uh, one of the very first offers that I wrote was a five month closing date, but that's what my buyer client wanted. Well, he had a house to sell. And I said, well, let's, let's see what happens. Well, the seller accepted it because they were building a new home. <laughs> it wasn't going to be read for five months. So it's always best to call the listing agents and ask them, when does the seller want to close? Make sure that you've talked to your lender so you know how to structure this transaction and how quickly they can close. Uh, the last time I talked to a, a lender, 
uh, the one thing that was delaying everything were the, the bank appraisals because they were just so backlogged. Um, I also then follow up with, oh, by the way, are there any other offers on the property? Why do you wanna know that? Because again, it's gonna help you structure that offer because there's a, there's, there's a, a, a good possibility you're gonna be competing with at least one or up to even 10 or 15. Uh, I had a listing not too long ago, I had eight offers all submitted within 12 hours. I mean, it was just crazy town. Um, download to seller property condition disclosure and take a look at it. You know where to find that? It's in the MLS. It's right underneath the photos of the house and you'll see it. It looks like a bunch of papers. It's called uh, supplements. So that's where you've got it. Just download that and read it. Make sure that there are no abnormalities or if there were problems in the past for the leaking roof, was it repaired? Was there a burst pipe? Was that fixed? When did that happen? Those kinds of things. Depending on where you are, you may have a TISH report. Uh, the TISH is the truth in um, seller housing. Shoot, I just had a blank spot there. Uh, but there are municipalities such as Hopkins or um, um, Maple Grove and some of the others that have uh, a requirement for the seller to have the house inspected before it goes on the market. So if there are some glaring deficiencies with the house, uh, the TISH report will uh, identify that. If the house is prior to built prior to 78, you're gonna have a lead paint. Uh, get your pre-approval letter from your lender and I always ask my buyer client to write what we affectionately refer to as a, a love letter. Now, be careful about what you put in there or what they put in there, uh, because you do not want them to be discriminated against, um, which could happen. Um, you may have uh, a protected class buyer, and that protected class buyer or buyers could be discriminated against. So be careful about what you put in there. It's, it's best to just say, we love that big open deck. We can see ourselves entertaining family and friends. Uh, the backyard, we can have all sorts of football games and badminton. Oh, that kitchen is to die for. Keep it very generic. Uh, any additional addenda if you're out in the sticks, you may have a well, septic, or some other kind of uh, addenda. Um, I use Instanet and AuthentiSign. Uh, prepare the cover email. I always uh, summarize what the offer is when I send it over to uh, the other agent, to the listing agent. I said, you know, here's an offer on the property, and then I list, you know, sale price, closing date any seller paid earnest money type of financing. And it applies to the commercial too, Greg. I'm sure you've, uh, you've done this before, right? Yeah. Um, make sure that you get some sort of acknowledgement from the listing agent that they did receive it. Um, then you get into negotiating the offer. If, if, uh, if, if they're countering back and forth, you will be using a counter offer addendum. So all of this just records what the final sale is. So now it goes into pending. Earnest money gets transferred over electronically. There's a trust funds. Um, I always email copies to the listing agent, the title company, the lender, the buyer, make sure that everybody has copies. You don't have a valid PA until it has been delivered. A command, uh, record in here who the lender is, phone number, buyer's title company, uh, the date that you order, the home inspection. The home inspection time period uh, is, is a very finite uh, period of time. And you've got to be real, real careful about recording when that expires. So what is eight days from today? 
I do not have a calendar in front of me. So if you have a calendar in front of you, what, eh, pull it up on my phone. So let's say you write in there that you've got an eight day Today is December 1, so eight days starting tomorrow. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it ends on Wednesday, December 9 at 11.59 p.m. Everything has to be negotiated and agreed to and signed off on by 11.59 p.m. on December 9. Okay, that's why I put in there what is the end of the home inspection contingency? Put it on your calendar too. Hey, Jim. Um, yeah. You said eight days from today, but then you also said starting tomorrow. Could you clarify that? Yeah, if, if you write in there that it's an eight day contingency or a 10 day contingency or a five day contingency, you always start with the next business day or the next calendar day, I should say. Got it. Okay. All right, so you can't count today because you may have written the contract today at 115, but it didn't get accepted and signed off on until 10 o'clock tonight. So you really can't count today in that time period. So you always count it the next day. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome, Greg. Um, continuing on, you know, for pre closing, uh, just got to keep following up with the lender, with the title company. Uh, make sure you're using a title company that um, opens up the file the day they receive it, not a week before it's scheduled to close, because there could be uh, issues. I had one on uh, one of my listings, and it turned out that uh, the guy had a judgment from his previous wife. He owed some back taxes, and there was one other uh federal tax, I think, that he also had due. So it's like $30,000 that had to be accounted for um, before it could close. Um, so the pre-closing and the closing, it's just, you know, a neat little way of keeping everything on track. They're paying us a lot of money. You know, you could be making 8,000, 10,000, 15, 20,000 or more on a sale of a transaction. And they're turning to us for uh, our expertise and to make sure that we follow everything. So this is a little checklist that I use all the time. Uh, it, it just keeps me on track. You know, uh, we have a five-year client follow-up program to update command, uh, getting the key over, you know, taking down the sign or, nope, that's sorry listings. <laughs> if you have a listing, you got to remove the signpost. So I've got another checklist for that. So our checklist, um, I'd be glad to share it to you. If you would send me an email with your email address uh, and I'll shoot it out to you. Okay. And it's Jim at kw.com. It's that simple. All right. We good. All right, I'm Can going to- Can I ask a question before you move on? Yeah. Um, so under the pre-approval, you have um, compensation disclosure. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you find that in forms? Because when I was looking for that, I was having trouble finding um, the compensation disclosure form. Yeah, that, that has uh, fallen off the radar. Uh, John Butler, uh, always wanted to see that to make sure that the seller or the buyer knew what how we were getting compensated. But you're right, it's not an instant it forms anymore. I don't I don't know what happened to that little rascal. Okay, so because it still says required in command. I know. So, and I know it's like listed in your it's listed in your buyer representation and sometimes it's listed in the purchase agreement. So is it still just is it not required in command even though it says it's required? You know, you're not going to go to jail if you don't have it. <laughs> so I get stuff rejected because I don't include a seller uh, uh, seller net until closing. So it just gets rejected. And, okay, eh. so just leave it off and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you didn't hear that from me though. Okay. <laughs> All right, I've got to make this larger. 
So where's that button? And where'd it go? Well, that's not it. Hmm. Bear with me, guys. Oh, I know why. There it is. I've got to move you guys down a bit and I will new share. Okay. All right, can everybody see this? Okay. Um, ignore the data in there. Since my transaction forms are not working, I'll use one from a, a recent uh, uh, PA. So go to Instant Forms. This stuff is really easy to fill in. There's a little calendar there and you just click on it and you put in the date that you're writing the PA. So it fills that in for you automatically. Put in your address of the property, uh, what the purchase price is. Whoops, I'm sorry, sorry. That was a, a counter. Start, take two. Uh, date of the PA, put in the, the name, earnest money. That goes in there. This box gets checked only if the earnest money is not going to the listing broker. It's custom in this marketplace for all earnest money to be held by the listing broker. All right. Now, I had a transaction with a little mom and pop shop down in, I don't know, Carter County, and they didn't have it set up electronically. So he checked that box or he had me check that box and we held the escrow, the earnest money. Uh, address, whatever county it's in, zip code. Now, if you haven't read this in a while, read it and then read it again, please. This is everything that is going to transfer with the property. And this area right down in here was added just this past August. So it has all integrated phone and home automation systems, including necessary components such as intranet and internet connected hardware or devices, control units other than non-dedicated, and applicable software, permissions, passwords, codes, access information, all right, so if they've got a ring doorbell, it stays, it's right there, all right? And anything else that is built in, now, you're probably wondering, well, Jim, why are you listing this stuff again? It's right up in here. Well, because there was a situation not too long ago, where not with me, but with uh, one of your colleagues, that uh, the seller thought, well, yeah, I know it says refrigerator here, but it just slides out. It's not connected to a water source. All I have to do is unplug it, slide it out, and I'm taking it with me. And it was argued it's in the PA. So based on that and based on advice from legal counsel, I am now putting all of the stuff right here in the PA. But Jim, the dishwasher is under the counter and it's installed and it's connected. Yep. The microwave may or may not be. The oven in the range may or may not be. The refrigerator, again, you could slide it out or just disconnect the water hose. The washer and dryer, water softener, I'm just writing it in there. You may have some other, other agents uh, in, in, in our marketplace that will say, you have to have a personal property addendum. Mm -mm. I've already verified that. This is sufficient. You don't have to have one more piece of paper. Not only that, but it kind of messes up uh, a lot of the lenders. They don't want to see 
personal property being financed. So if it's in the PA, it's concluded. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, purchase price, all you have to do is type it in and it prints it out for you. Your financing, whether it's uh, you know all cash or part cash, part financing. Uh, we don't see too many assumption mortgages uh, these days. Um, and I always write on or before a specific date. On or before gives you the flexibility and the seller the flexibility to close earlier if everybody can. So that's a little trick. So financing, again, check off the appropriate box. If it is contingent upon it, is it a first mortgage only? Is it conventional? Is it FHA? Is it VA? Uh, and again, I'm, I'm going to, at the risk of repeating myself, consult with the loan officer to make sure that you're structuring this thing correctly. Uh, because the percentage down could influence the decision if you're in a, a, a multiple offer situation. Um, or scooting down here, whether the, where is it? Whether the seller is contributing to any of the buyer's closing costs. Did we lose him? You're on mute, Maureen. Oof. Okay, you're back. Phew. Don't do that to me. All right, I'm going to minimize <laughs> All right, I know you're there. I see Greg's head. Okay, putting you off to the side, Greg. All right, so let me scroll back up here again. All right, so the type of financing, whether it's VA, DVA stands for, stands for a Department of Veterans Affairs, FHA. Um, don't forget to put in the amortization, the number of years that it's going to be amortized. Uh, this person actually was locked in at 2.75%, but I always go a little bit higher and she could qualify for this. So I just want a little bit higher. I don't bother putting in market. That's too vague. It's it's subject to misinterpretation. So I just put in something maybe half a percent to three quarters of a percent uh, above today's current rates. Hey, Jim, I lost your screen share. Did everybody else see his screen share? Yeah, screen? I can't see the screen either. Yeah, I can't see the screen either. We lost your screen okay. share. All right, hang on. Sorry, Jim. Sorry about that. Thanks for sharing that. Back on, got it. It's a black screen, oh, there it goes. It's working now. Okay. It's probably my Wi-Fi up here in the hinterlands of Northern Wisconsin. All right, so back over here, it keeps telling me that my internet is unstable. <laughs> so just holler if you lose it again. So I was talking about this interest rate over here and your amortization. Now, coming down to here, I used to check off this box to protect my buyer client, but because I've been in so many multiple offer competing situations, I've now been checking off uh, box 78 to make this stronger and more acceptable to the seller. Uh, it's still protecting the buyer, but just not as much as line 72. So when, you're, when you know you've got competition, make sure that your offer is strong. Um, this is just talking about the what if scenario, if it doesn't happen, anytime there's a cancellation, you Sorry, have can, to have. Can, can you explain number seven? Say again? 
you you said to have a strong offer you should check number 78 about the written statement can you explain yeah. what the written statement is yeah what we'd be turning in yeah 72 yeah okay uh 72 basically says if the buyer can't get their financing um the deal is dead all right okay. earnest money is returned and you know we all go our merry ways this one says buyer shall provide seller or licensee representing or assisting seller with the written statement on or before november 30th this is from the lender from the mortgage loan officer that says yep we are good to go okay. this person has all of the documentation good employment good okay. credit score and the appraisal has also come in and everything is a-okay some people call that a clear to close all right so it's a very strong statement that says we're ready to rock and roll uh this kind of goes on to you know what happens if it doesn't locking in a mortgage i usually put in at any time prior to closing or within five days of final acceptance depends on the volatility of the market at that point you know if, if interest rates are you know doing this uh you may want to lock in sooner uh but golly day they're they're just hanging around under three percent and you know just flipping along there so my client in this case uh was was locked in because it was just such a good rate at the 2.75 uh these sections here come into play when you're dealing with fha and va um fha also has a a, a floor that uh, the house must appraise for the sales price. All right. So with the conventional, you know, this is for an FHA clause. So you just leave that blank. Uh, I did have a situation on a listing uh, just last month. The property did not appraise for sales price. It was VA. And that was going to be the price. So I had the opportunity to submit uh, comparables and we won the uh, the decision, they reconsidered and they did appraise it for sales price. So if you get into a situation like that, just pick up the phone, call me, I'll walk you through the steps. Um, again, FHA. The appraisal. Danielle, what? The appraisal has to come out exactly the sales price in that situation. okay yep yep or it, it was going to close at the appraised value and that was de detrimental to my seller client uh so you don't have to fill this out if it's a conventional just skip on down again whether there are seller contributions and if not that makes it a stronger offer for the seller uh, I had buyer client ask me, well, Jim, what if we were to write it for 335 and ask for $5,000 back? And my suggestion was, let's write it for the 330 and not ask for any money back. Psychologically, with the seller, it's a stronger offer. It's a mind game. Inspections, a buyer can elect to have a property inspection i would always encourage a buyer even on a condo to have a home inspection it's whether it's contingent that's another story if you run into problems and it's not contingent the buyer is proceeding with the purchase too bad so in 99 percent of the cases it will be contingent upon the home inspection because then you can also use that time period uh to cancel the uh cancel the sale although i hate doing that our job is to help people buy not cancel contracts uh there's the pa coming down yeah um i'm not so between the 
the inspect or the buyer's inspection and the tish inspection i've had some questions from buyers kind of why do both can you just explain a little bit the tish is uh, paid for by the seller it's ordered by the seller and it's performed by that municipality by that city so it could be golden valley it could be hopkins uh but it, it's it's a requirement of that municipality and if there's something really glaringly wrong the seller has to fix it so the tish report may indicate that uh there was a broken pipe uh connecting the house to the public sewer line and by the time you have your home inspection that should have been fixed but you were made aware of it so full disclosure number one and number two it gives you the opportunity to call it uh, to the attention of the home inspector and say could you double check make sure that that really was fixed all right so it's kind of a check and a double check that answer your question yes so if i was to have a buyer that didn't want a contingency upon inspection, but they were kind of trusting the tish. Would you recommend that? Would you kind of tell them not to um, just have their own inspection, but not have a contingent? So no stronger offer obviously would be to have it not contingent upon inspection. Um, I just have a question around kind of your opinion there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and and you're gonna love my answer. It's a it's a typical attorney answer. It depends. <laughs> uh, if you got a fairly new home and uh, you know everything looks really good in the windows you know no rot no 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 mold you're looking at you know other appliances and everything seems okay uh and you can look at yourself your buyer and say it's up to you uh but i would always recommend getting a home inspection because it also not only points out what's right with the home or what's wrong with the home but it also teaches the buyer how to live in that home see this this is the air filter for your furnace and hvac system you should change that every quarter do you see this valve up here don't touch it <laughs> you know so it teaches them how to use the house but i would always recommend a home inspection whether they make a contingent or not uh depends on the condition of uh of, of the property and what your competition is if you've got eight other offers uh, there's a high probability that one of those, if not more, will not have a home inspection contingency. But there's a risk involved. There's a risk. And again, our job is to advise and protect our buyer clients. They make the final decision. You know, we, we give them the pros and the cons and let them decide. Uh, but if I'm going to err on the uh, side of caution, I'd say, get it, make it contingent. Thank you. Hey, Jim, I got a question in regards to that, too. So my question is, I'm, I'm sorry, Daniel. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So my question is, do you I can know, hear you. Maybe Wendy would know more about this if there's a class on like these different scenarios um, of like, when you're going into multiple offers and like the negotiating process, do you know if there's a class on that stuff? I just feel like that would be a good resource for newer agents. There are, there are. Um, and uh, a lot of them are um, uh, with continuing ed credit. Sometimes within the office, within the market center, uh, Rick Brahma likes to conduct uh those negotiation classes um and I, i'm just gonna at the uh, again repeating myself if you have questions pick up the phone i answer my phone weekends whether i'm in town or out of town i answer and i've i've gotten uh a lot of questions about negotiating strengths and and you know should you or shouldn't you so i'll help you walk through the process okay but yes to answer your question there are classes all right okay, thank you somewhere yeah, off that through that definitely could get stronger at yes yes and one of the things that really helped me years ago was a book uh, uh, herb cohen c-o-h-e-n uh, was his name um, and he took a uh, kind of a humorous 
approach to negotiating. It was called, you can negotiate anything from a, um, <laughs> a refrigerator at Sears <laughs> in one of the big box stores to, you know, whatever. And he talks about different styles. Um, we were involved in one uh, the other day and I started laughing and my buyer client says, what's so funny? I said, well, you, you made a real low ball offer and the seller came back with, you know, a very tiny counter offer. I said, that's what the Soviets do. You know, the Russians uh, back in the, uh, the Cold War days, they would negotiate in little bits and pieces. <laughs> you know, so I said, this, this is a, a style. And um, then I, I took a piece of paper and I wrote down where I predicted the eventual sales price was going to end up. And I, and I folded it and I handed it to her and I said, um, don't open it until after it's all said and done. And after it was all said and done, she opened it up and she said, how did you know? I said, because in 99% of the cases, it's going to be midway between this, <laughs> this asking price and this initial offer. It almost invariably ends up in the middle. So it really is funny. So, you know, just, they've got some good books on it and Herb Cohen takes a humorous approach uh, to negotiating. So he makes it fun as you're learning it. Um, sale of another person's, uh, of, of the buyer's property. And this gets tricky. Uh, when somebody asks me, well, I want to start looking, I want to buy, well, can you afford two mortgages? Well, no. Do you have to sell your house and get the equity out of your house? Yes. All right. You're better off selling the house now so you don't have to play this game of the contingency in a, in a PA offer that you have to sell your house. It just really muddies the water. And if you're in a competing situation, you're not going to get it. You know, because if they've got a cash buyer or somebody that's, uh, you know, 50% down, that's a much stronger buyer than what this scenario is going to be when you have to sell a house. So there's, there's a whole nother class on that. So I try to avoid that at all costs. Real estate taxes and special assessments, uh, they're prorated at time of uh, closing. If there are special assessments and deferred taxes, I always put in there that the seller is responsible for paying those. Um, Carly and I listed a um, condo downtown uh, about a year and a half ago, and the special assessment was 68 thousand dollars yes six eight thousand and I, I, I after i picked my jaw back up off the floor i said why well there was a lot of deferred maintenance in that building over the years and the new property management company that came in discovered all of these deficiencies windows and caulking and roofs and you know all sorts of issues and uh their portion was $68,000. We were very fortunate that we were able to split that 50-50 uh, with the buyer. Whew, we dodged that bullet, but it had to be disclosed. And so that was a negotiable item, but normally uh, you don't have that kind of excessive special assessment. So require that the seller pay for it. Um, if hey, you, Jim. yeah, Greg. And on commercial or on residential, is there a way to get a heads up um, so you don't get surprised by something like a special assessment uh, as you get down the road a ways and all of a sudden it's going to blow up the deal? Yeah, if, if you've got a good working relationship with a title company, ask them to uh, run a quick search and then go to public tax records and the court records and um, they've got all the resources and the software uh, that they can pull it up for you real fast. All right. That's why I use the company that I use. I mean, they're just so right on top of everything. Um, if you had another sale, another purchase of another property with this buyer client, 
make sure that the cancellation has been signed by both parties. Uh, that's what this is all talking about. Uh, typically, it's going to be a warranty deed that uh, the seller is going to convey. I had a listing in uh, Mendota Heights this summer, and it was a trustee, so it was a trustee's deed, not a full warranty deed. Uh, possession is usually immediately after closing. If there is any discussion about uh, early occupancy by the buyer or post occupancy by the seller, in Instanet forms, there are agreements for occupying the property either before closing or after the closing. Well, Jim, it's only three days. Get the addendum signed now. <laughs> Don't screw around with it. It, it will cost you, uh, you don't want to go down that road. Just, just do it. And if you have a question, call me. Uh, title and exam, uh, I want to draw your attention to this paragraph right here, beginning on 294. If there's a cloud on the title, if there's something wrong with the title, the contract is extended automatically for 30 days to allow the seller to correct it. We lucked out on the one that closed last week. Uh, they were able to get everything that they needed. Phew, and they closed on Friday. But it was a little nip and tuck for a while there, but the contract would have been extended automatically 30 days to give the seller at seller's expense uh, the time to, uh, to fix it. But, this is why you also have uh, title insurance. So if somebody ever asks you, well, the lender requires a title insurance policy. Should I get one for the owner? Yes, because that's what saved this transaction on Friday. It was the, the buyer's owner's policy that they took out when they bought the property 15 years ago. Uh, mechanics, liens, uh, risk of loss. The, the homeowner is still responsible for the property, maintaining it, uh, fire, water damage, whatever. They still have to uh, take good care of it. Uh, time is of the essence, line 327. Now I can say this because I'm half Italian. But uh, when time is of the essence does not mean, hey, when I get around to it. <laughs> no, it's very precise. If you say you got eight days, by golly, you better adhere to that time frame. Or there could be consequences. <laughs> so um, calculation of days, look at which ones you're talking about. Um, the home inspection is uh, calendar days, but there may be something else that is business days. So business days do not count holidays, Saturdays or Sundays. All right. Whatever you get here, whether it's a, a disclosure alternative or the full uh, disclosure form, it's you download it, you get to sign it as well. Um, if it's connected to water and sewer, that's where you check those off. If you don't have any private water cell, the uh, private wells or sewage systems on site, you don't have to worry about it. If you're out in the country, you may. So if that's the case, then you're going to have an addendum for a well and an addendum for uh, a septic tank and system. Could you talk a little bit more about and because in my old marketplace? about uh, this alternative up here? The disclosure alternative. Can you go yeah, into sure. that a little bit? Yeah, let's say um, you're making an offer on a property that the seller never lived in. It's been a rental property all of these years. Um, so a full disclosure, the seller's not gonna know anything about it because they never lived there. So they would use a disclosure alternative. Uh, if it's an estate sale, 
the attorney handling the estate for the deceased never lived there. What are they going to use? The disclosure alternative. All right. So it comes down to, did they live in the property or did they not live in the property and occupy it? Is that the only time that you're able to use that? Uh, I mean, or are you required to use like a regular disclosure? Uh, there's one other time. I didn't want to muddy the waters. There's one other time. And that's if you're selling the house and it's as is condition. I did that two summers ago. Uh, the house, had wonderful man, wonderful seller. Um, but he five years that he lived in it, it needed siding. The windows were bad. The appliances were bad. Uh, you know, it's cracks and foundation was all wonky. So we decided to sell it as is, and we use the seller disclosure alternative. And when you pull up that form, there's a box that waves uh, the, uh, uh, the buyer's right to come back. And well, you said everything was, no, you're buying it as is, and you're accepting it as is. Okay. So if you ever get into a situation like that, Daniel, just, just, Again, pick up the phone, call me. They're one of those All for right, commercial. I'll walk you through. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you have due diligence, Greg. You have your due diligence period. Okay. Uh, home warranties. Um, I will always offer this to my sellers. Again, depending on the on the age of the house, if the house is three years old, there's no sense. Uh, what that does is it, uh, it it protects the seller and it protects you, the listing agent, from the buyer coming back to them later and saying, well, the air conditioning doesn't work, or the dishwasher sprung a leak, or the, <laughs> the furnace just quit working on us. And that happened to me personally when I sold uh, one of my homes years ago. The downstairs air conditioning did not work the day after closing, of course. Fortunately, I had a homeowner's warranty that I offered and said, here's the 800 number, give them a call. And it took that liability off of my shoulders as the seller and as the agent. Um, it doesn't cost all that much, generally under $500. Um, in this case, we we're asking the seller to pay that because they were actually offering it in the, in the multiple list. So we just made sure that they were going to agree to that. Uh, and the house was 19 years old and, you know, appliances start to get a little wonky um, from about that age on, you know, and it becomes questionable uh, how much longer are they gonna last? So. Um, so you said you did that when you're listing, when you're listing you, you advise your sellers to do a home warranty plan? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and how and do you three of the listings just in the last four months? I did. Do you get that information for them or do your sellers find their own home warranty plan? There's no. one called Cinch. That's a good one, Maureen. What's that? Yeah, the Cinch. Yeah, they're Sorry. hang on, my internet is acting up again. It's C I um in our well, there's HMS, yeah. HMS uh, is in our office. It's in the drawers by the mailboxes. It's a uh, green. Um, it's four eighty nine, and it just gives you peace of mind and uh, gets that that liability off of your shoulders. Um, there are many other. Uh, warranty companies out there. That's the one I enjoy working with the best because uh, the, the rep is just so good in, uh, in handling claims. She, she's just right on top of it. So HMS is the one I recommend. As a buyer, if you're representing the buyer and the seller is not offering that, you can also offer the buyer that HMS home warranty as well. Okay. Uh, dual agency 
this is, <laughs> I get a lot of questions on this one. Um, well, Jim, it's a Keller Williams agent out of uh, Beak's office. Mm -mm. Different brokerage. Yeah, but it's owned by John Butler. Yeah, I know. The quirk of the law is John Butler or any one of us can be the broker of only three, maximum three offices. And John is the broker for the Edina Keller Williams office, the Uptown Keller Williams office, and the Otsego Keller Williams office. And he owns this market center, but the law won't allow him more than three. So guess who's the broker? <laughs> so you only have dual agency if you guys sell each other's listings or you have your own buyer client uh, buying your own listing. So that's the only time we have uh, dual agency. It's got to be out of Premier Realty, Lake Minnetonka. No other Keller Williams office. Forget about Butler. Um, electronic signatures. That's it's fully acceptable now. Years ago it was not, uh, but it is now. And if you have any other quirks, you know, this is where you can fill in the blanks, type that in there. If you have additional addenda, you can check off those appropriate boxes. And this is the final date of acceptance. And there's your wire fraud. Okay, this is a uh, arbitration, uh, which the limit is $15,000. So whether you have your clients sign this or not, to have arbitration, all parties to the contract, including their agents, must sign this addendum. If you're looking at a house and it's a higher priced property, and you suspect that there may be issues with it, you may not want your buyer client to sign this because their remedies are limited to only $15,000. Arbitration is a, is, a, is a more efficient way of settling a dispute. It costs less than court fees and, and attorney's fees. And it's going to be done a whole lot faster than waiting possibly months to before to go before a judge and a jury. So arbitration on you know small amounts is a great tool. But if you think that it's it's going to be a ginormous problem, you may want to say, mm, let's not sign that. And it's not going to affect the PA one way or the other. Okay. So if the other agent says, well, you have to sign it, no you don't have to sign it. You don't. It's not going to affect the purchase agreement. All right. Uh, this is their property disclosure. And there's a on. So this one was actually, there's the counter offer addendum. Hope I didn't make you dizzy. And that was exactly where I said it was going to sell. She offered 380. They were asking 399.9. It ended up at 390. I love it when it comes together like that. Just makes me chuckle. Um, but that Herb Cohen book. And then we also put a little commercial. Cryptic. Sure, anything. You okay. can negotiate anything. And the idea is, is that you learn about people's styles because you said 99% of the deals come in midway anyway. Is that right? Just about, just about. Okay, just for last thing, I wonder if transaction forms are gonna come back up again. Nope. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with it. All right, so we're all back to uh, together again. Uh, what other questions do you have for me? I know I went through it fast in an hour. There's a lot to it. 
So we should just email you to have um, you send us that buyer presentation that you were talking about in the checklist. Yep. Okay. Let me go to desktop. Um, you're not seeing this right now, but I'm looking for now. Ah. I'll send it to you separately. Yeah, just send me your email and I'll send those two documents uh, over to you. I'll send them separately uh, because the one has a lot of, it takes up a lot of space. So I don't want to slow it down. It's a PowerPoint. All right, so any other question? questions? When you're, um, when you're filling this out, um, do you sit down with your buyer and fill this out with your buyer or do you, First, you know, you're reaching out to the listing agent, um, finding out what the sellers want, what their terms are. You get back to your buyers. Do you then just email this first to your buyers or do you actually sit and go over it with them line by line? I don't. Um, you can, uh, but I, I go through in my consultation initially uh what the process is and and the various elements of it's not just always price it's terms and conditions so by the time we're ready to make an offer they're pretty comfortable with what you know what's what's in their head that they want to offer uh and i know the contract well enough that i know the questions to ask uh to fill it out so you can sit down with them with your computer open and fill it in uh, you can have a blank one sent over to them and they can look at it uh, by all means. You know, uh, there are certain types of people like engineers or, or uh, CPAs and accountants that want to read every line and they want to see all the blanks and, you know, I want to see the whole thing. Fine, I'll get you a copy. Um, but I'll prepare it and I'll shoot it over to them electronically for signature. By then, they trust me. They, they, we talked about the terms and conditions. Uh, I've, I've uh, put it all in there. And I said, any questions, just, just don't sign it. Call me first, because I can always modify it uh, and get it back to them within minutes. Okay. And then they, it's then not like the old days when you had to do it all by hand. Okay. And then once they're comfortable and they've signed it, then it moves on to um, sending it to the listing agent, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yep. Along with the pre approval letter, along with some sort of uh, cover email. And <laughs> guess what? Finally, just an hour later, pulled up my instant at forms. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Should have covered up the name to protect the innocent, but I didn't. Hey, Jeff Palmstead, are you still on? I think no, he dropped off. I, a while I just see ago. his picture down there. Okay, that's what I thought too, Greg. <laughs> I'm here, Jim. Oh, you are he's there. Here. Okay, I thought you fell asleep or left us. Okay, he's muted. <laughs> All right. Um, what else, guys? Hey, Jim, I think there were three items that you said you would send over. One was the initial starting checklist that you had, uh, the yep. other one was some kind of a consultation. Well, yep. the, the, okay, and then the third one was the um, the buyer's checklist. Oh, that is it. Uh, I've got two checklists. I've got one for buyers, one for sellers. So I can either send you the sellers now oh, okay. uh, or wait until next week okay. with the class. So either one. I was mistaken. Uh, the, only thing, the only thing I ask with the buyer consultation is that you take our names off. It's going to be Camarada Numeric on everything. <laughs> so, and I could ask right. Wendy in the office for the HMS home warranty document. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. in in the workroom. You know where your uh, your mail slots are and and those uh, suspension files. Yes. You know what I mean. I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. There's a there's a work table, and then there's a counter with a bunch of cabinets over it. Do okay. it, Danielle? Should I, should I yeah. Actually, it's it's 
that I did a that I that I had a closing on a listing already without a warranty? Should I be worried? Yes. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not mandatory. No. But, but I'm like, oh poor. boy. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. You're not gonna go to jail. Okay. Um, the suspension files are, are right next to, there are two drawers of our uh, email boxes. And I think it's the third draw in, it's about in the middle. Uh, and you'll see they're, they're green and it's HMS. So, but yes, Wendy should know where they are. All right, and then you can read through it. And uh, Jennifer has been in our office a number of times, uh, Jennifer. Uh, Gagney, she's uh, the rep for HMS. Uh, she's just so marvelous. I mean, she, you talk about customer service. She, she, she delivers. All righty. My time is up. If you Thank have you. any questions, please don't hesitate to call me. Um, uh, my job is to keep you out of realtor jail. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank See you. you guys. Hey, Greg, you still there? Oh, yeah, I am. I didn't realize it just didn't disconnect. What's up? I, I was just playing around with this Zoom deal. How do you get, um, like, I notice on certain Zoom calls I have, people have, like, I see you have a black background. Yeah. How do you, how do you change your backgrounds? Yeah, super easy. So the first thing you do is, like, just get your monitor so where it's like a black screen. And then take okay. a screenshot of your black screen save it as an image. So basically you're creating a picture of a black screen, right? Sure. Save it on your computer hard drive. And then once you have your image, then what you do when you go into Zoom, as a matter of fact, you can do it right now. Here, I'll just show you how to do it. Um, do you see um, the little video icon at the bottom that says, that has the video icon with the little up arrow? Um. You may have to scroll your mouse down to get it to populate. So scroll down to the bottom of your window and it should pop up like a, for the icon of your microphone, the icon of the video more, and then leave the meeting. Yeah, I'm on my phone. So I wonder if it's different. Oh, okay. Maybe. I well, when you're on your PC, um, you know, and Zoom has a good article on it, but basically you just got to get a, a black image and sure. save it on your hard drive. And then there's a simple setting that you just go and you say, vir it's called virtual desktop. And you just go turn on your virtual desktop. You just select the um, uh, vir virtual background, virtual oh. background. And uh, you just uh, s tell it, yeah, hey, I wanna turn on my virtual background. And you can do the virtual background live right within a meeting um, when you're on PC anyway, uh, that I know of. Um, Virtual background is what it's called, and then basically okay. you just you just you just tell it to um, you know how you know how it when you have an option to say like you know use this and then it gives you some options and then you can choose or browse you know or browse your computer or whatever you know go find your own file kind of a thing yeah and you just basically choose that option go find that image that you saved with the black background 
know, like a screenshot of a black background and then you just upload it and it's very easy. Yeah, it's very easy to do, nothing special. That's on Zoom anyway. Um, I don't know if any of the other video conferencing does it. Yeah, okay. But Zoom That's does. Yeah, really very easy to do. But, but I saw you had it, so I'm like, oh, I'll just ask. And I saw you yeah. still Yeah, very easy to do. Cool. Looking hey, off. get better, man. I uh, didn't want to draw attention to that when we were on the call today, but uh, um, no fun. I, and I'm glad you're you're not getting hit hard by it so far. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm I, I'm not sick or anything. Wow, that's crazy, right? Good. Yeah. Well, did, did you hear that? Did you hear that I had COVID or something? Yeah, you mentioned it this morning. No. When we were, when we were on our, um, when we were on our uh, eight a.m. meeting for the team meeting at at uh, eight. No, I never said I had COVID. Uh. I don't know. Maybe you didn't. Maybe somebody else told me then. I can't. Yeah, maybe somebody else does. No, I don't have it. No. I, oh, I you don't have it. it. Who? You do not have it. No, I don't have it. No. no oh, no. good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, good. Who, I'm glad. I don't know who said they had it, but I don't. Oh, I must have misunderstood something there. Oh, I'm glad you don't have it. That's fantastic. Yeah, I know my brother's had it, and I know a lot of people, but I, I've been kind of laying low because I've been spending some time with my... Um, new little with my grandma and, and stuff like oh, that yeah. my brother just had a had a baby on uh what saturday friday friday cool so i mean i know they're super cautious so i've been laying pretty low yep yep yeah i know we my wife and i we're helping out my wife's parents a lot um she does not drive and uh my wife's dad has alzheimer's dementia and so he has to have 24 seven care. So we've been trying to keep them safe. And it's a little, little tenuous because we have aides that come in throughout the day, you know, to help out um, Mary Jane cause she can't handle them all day, you know, 24 seven by herself. Yeah. Um, so we have some outside help that comes in but that always makes us a little nervous of course when you bring That's in great. outside help. So, but so far, you know the Lord's been watching over us and nobody's got it so far. So we're happy about that, but it has been making me a little nervous with the spike. A lot of people at our church have it. Um, we've got some pastors who have, I mean, it wasn't until what, you know, a couple of weeks ago that I really started knowing people who had it, you know, back in March, April, May, June. I mean, it was like, really? I mean, you hear these might, you hear these stories, but you don't really know anybody who has it. At least I did it. Um, until just, you know, two or three weeks ago, then it's like, oh, he has it. Oh, he has, she has it. Oh, Jeff and Holly have it. Oh my goodness. Crazy. Did Jeff and Holly both get it? Yeah, they had it. They both had COVID. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So they were, they were self-quarantined for about a week and a half. Um, I guess, I don't know if that was public knowledge, so you don't, have, don't make a big deal out of it, but I don't think they were keeping it private per se either. So. No. Yeah. Um, Cause but, I didn't see them all last week. They weren't in. Right. And that's very unusual, right? Yeah. I was looking like, God, Jeff's not in. I was just thinking Thanksgiving or something. You know, so <laughs> there wasn't many people in the office at all last week. It was, it's kind of nice. I mean, selfishly, it's, um, you go in there, you're not distracted, you get your stuff done and you get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. that was nice. Yeah, I was, when I was watching Jim go through their PA, I was just thinking I should go on here and say, Hey Jim, I'm, I'm 28 pages into a 62 page PA right now. And then oh after that, I, I have to review a, uh, a environmental assessment. That's another 32 pages. Whoa. Uh, so I'm at uh, 94 pages of stuff and boy, you guys knock it out in three pages. I wish, <laughs> I wish that was the case. So I'm involved in a very complicated industrial deal and uh, the, the sellers are a chemical distribution company. Oh, wow. Whenever right. you see the true owners, you know, the chemical company, just know you're in for a long road. <laughs> wow, right. See, we've been negotiating since July and we got another two months to go. So just to put it in wow. perspective, yeah. Wow, well, I hope that gets done for you for sure. Yeah, that's a what, tough one. You've been able to, some 
listings or buyer rep or the action? Um, working on a couple tenant rep things. Um, it's been been slow. Um, I haven't closed a transaction for a while, so I definitely uh, definitely need to get something across the finish line here as soon as possible. But um, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Well, you sold one of those Eric's bike shop or we'll pedal something. Uh, yeah, kind of. It was um, Pen um, Pen Cycle. It was the uh, yeah Lake Lake Street Pen Cycle building, and uh, there's a lot of activity there with the uh, uprising, you know. Yeah. So I'm glad I got that sold last year in the summertime last year. Oh, okay, um, that was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. So that was a little while ago. Yeah, well, I hope this, uh, how big is this industrial deal for you? Um, I mean, either square footage or price. Uh, it's uh, it's 45,000 square feet. It's on a little under, it's like 4.76 acres, uh, one and a half million. So it's a, per square foot. It's uh, it's very reasonable, but it's, uh, yeah, it's just a metal building. Well, it's been added on to numerous times. So some of it's <laughs> blocks, some of it's, uh, um it just precast steel you know 18 foot clear precast steel metal building is is what two of the additions were so yeah it's um and it's got a railroad spur that goes into it and some of the ground is covered with with concrete some of it's asphalt and there's saying <laughs> that there's contamination under it but the seller's saying hey it's concealed it's it's you know it's it's concealed with with um you know, pervious on top of it. So I mean, it's just, wow. Right. It, it's uh, I've never been in, well, I don't know, maybe I have, but so many attorneys, I mean, we're, we're dealing with attorneys. I mean, I went through eight emails today with attorneys back. Oh my forth. goodness. Really? Yeah, it's intense. Yeah. Cause wow. the seller is some massive like worldwide uh, company. I mean, so they, um, they're all over the world. They sell these different, I mean, you name a kind of chemical and they probably sell it. Okay. Um, Univar is USA solutions, but they're, I mean, they're all over the U S so, yeah. and it, it, they're all over the world. So, I mean, they, they're all legal up. Yeah. So right, right. With <laughs> environmental issues, we got all kinds of attorneys involved. So do you have uh, are you representing representing the buyer? Yeah, I got, got the buyer. It. Yeah. yeah. So did you guys get, have to do a, did you guys get um, a requirement or did you choose to do um, what's called a vapor, uh, vapor testing? Yep. Yeah, you had to do that. Okay. Yep. And then did you have to do like bore samples yep. um, and do it in the spring and the summer or, or do you have a plan for that? No, we just. I mean, no, winter and spring or winter and summer or whatever they, two seasons. Yeah, we just did it in the in the fall. Okay. So yeah, we, that in that should be fine. And we, gotcha. we know what's under there. We did we did twelve different borings. It's a fair amount for that size of uh, property. There's yeah. a lot of you know the same. There's a yard, so you know I just tested the yeah. yard spontaneous locations and um, and there was some issues. So I mean, there's some remediation that needs to take place. Who pays for it? We've renegotiated the price and to yeah. accommodate for that because they didn't, you know, they're big. They just want to sell it and be clean their hands. So they're, we were able to get them down a couple hundred grand. Oh, nice. Because that might be the cost of what it is to remediate it. So, yeah, right. Do you have any, did you do guys do vapor testing underneath the building, like underneath the concrete? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very no, good. I mean, it, like in the, there's some concrete, um, like driveway or parking areas that we did, but not actually in the building. I, I don't believe it, that they went, you know, down a couple feet or anything. Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious. I went to a, a training uh, thing on um, vapor testing underneath the building um kind of a thing so i was just curious if you ended up having to go through that because i'm kind of new and new into all that i haven't repped somebody to buy an industrial property yet so um 
I got a, you know, kind of learning curve ahead of me. And so I was just curious if you ended up having to face that or not. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of times when you run into very complex environmental issues, put it in the professional's hands and stay away. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, right? (laughs) That's the best thing to do. I mean, I know enough to be dangerous and I know that. Um, So I just, we hire American Engineering, Braun Intertech. Uh, we hire those guys, they go in, they, and they, at the end of their report, you, know, you can shuffle through the report and see some findings and stuff, but ultimately what matters is recommendation. So they're going to yeah, yeah. do this because that's what the lender is going to look at. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, recommend- the lender usually protects. Yeah, you, you follow their recommendations and, and satisfy all the concerns. And then uh, after that, you know, you it's way better than you trying to figure it out yeah 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 yeah. i don't want to take the time yeah no Good. these guys are you know some nerdy dudes that really studied this stuff hard for a long time so <laughs> they get it they're not great communicators but they can write a report and give you the gist of it so that's all i need good good so. who paid who paid for environment well i don't know if you want to disclose that or not but um yeah, no. did, uh, we did you guys paying- do the Usually the uh, the buyer does the I'm I'm trying to learn right so if I'm representing the buyer and I'm writing up a we're writing up a purchase agreement the buyer is usually willing to pay the phase one correct I think is the way typically it goes is that right yeah so you know a lot of times what I'll do is phase one is paid by the buyer and then if that triggers a phase two then the cost will be split. It'll be paid by, you know, you, you put something in there that you hope you represent the buyer, um, that, that you can get something out of the seller because they haven't disclosed it necessarily to you, but we found something that um, triggered the recommendation to, to do a phase two. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. So a lot of times you try to get the seller to pay. We got them to pay a little bit. Um, but it can get expensive once you get into remediation and you start talking, you know, five figures and six figures. And I mean, you, you get into real numbers. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, What's the price of a phase one typically? Oh, it all depends on the size, you know, anywhere from, you know, two grand to, you know, five, six grand. Okay. Okay. Depending yeah. On the, you know, square footage, age of the building um size of the lot uh, oh really okay and it's i mean there's, so there is stuff that goes into it so oh interesting really, even really even looking at how many tenants are in there uh yeah i mean what kind of tenants is really what matters i mean if they're oh. all if they're all the hairdressers well i mean i guess they use i mean if they're all accountants yeah uh, sure sure no no environmental yeah then it's just you'll do a phase one to probably to get a loan, but uh, because there might have been previous tenants that could have done something and it slipped through the, the title process or lending process when these, when the sellers bought it, but um, you're not as worried. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. This is a chemical distribution worldwide. (laughs) Right. For, for, (laughs) you know, 25 years, they're moving chemicals out of there. (laughs) There's going to be spillage. There's going to be all, you know, you know, these employees don't want to get in trouble. So they just kick a little dirt over it and, <laughs> and you just, you run into stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate the, the quick update there. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I uh, hope to see you around. Yeah. Do you get in the office much or you, you pretty much stay home? I pretty much stay home. I go to the office maybe once every two weeks, maybe once a week. Um, but it's pretty rare, at least with the flare up, you know, we have, um, our, you know, biweekly or once every two week meeting, you know, so I usually do go to face to face commercial meeting, you know, when, when we have them face to face, but we even put a halt on those the last couple of weeks now till the flare up of COVID settles down a little bit. So, yeah. Was there anybody in the office this morning for that meeting? No, it was all, it was all a uh, zoom. Okay. Meeting. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, who knows where, like, you know, Jeff probably piped in from his office, but, um, but nobody was using the training room. Yeah. Okay. How many people do you have on your team now? I just, 
popped in maybe a month ago or something. You guys had some new, like a lady and a guy. And that yeah, never... two two other people. So Patrick does apartments and Marie, um, she does kind of anything, um, landlord rep and and selling listings. She'll do. She's do. She got a listing right now in Burnsville that she's getting ready to close on. Anyway, her name is Marie. So Dan, me, Marie, and Patrick are the four, and then Jeff and Holly. So six of us. Sure. Yeah. Is Jeff staying pretty busy? You know, I I I think so. He's got. You never he's really got know this, with him though. <laughs> you don't, right? I don't. And uh, so I don't know, but he's got this um, residential guy out in Hutchinson, who like feeds him like tons of deals, and he, the Hutchinson guy does residential but he'll host the tours. So Jeff doesn't have to go out to Hutchinson, but then Jeff, you know, does all of his commercial marketing gig and everything and handles the negotiation on the commercial side and co-star and min car listing, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then they, then they have some kind of an agreement with their commission splits and that's keeping Jeff really busy. I mean, he's always talking about some other new deal in Hutchinson that he's got going on and it all is coming from this one residential guy out in Hutchinson. Oh, really? Yeah, I, he's brought up a couple Hutchinson, you know, I got this barn, and then it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> wow. Well, good to chat with you, Jeff. Nice visiting yeah. with you. Yeah, you too. Well, hopefully we get some deals going. We'll see what 21 brings for us, but, uh, but right you've on. been doing this a couple of years now. You know this time of year is just a, it just kind of tick, tick. <laughs> Tick, yeah. tick, like come on <laughs> no so, kidding uh, second week in january they actually get cranking again so right on all right well best to you on your uh chemical deal i hope that closes in a couple months for you and you get that across the finish line yeah thank you yeah for sure we'll uh we'll talk to you soon good jeff thanks for the visit you bet you too see ya bye